So this is the beginning of the fourth Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop. And welcome everybody on live stream and on the Skype call. And we'll be talking with Mr. Kesh at the Spaceship Institute. And he will be showing us um, using visual and other means to um, describe some of the wonders of the universe in a way that children can understand and perhaps even adults too. So, um, we will also be speaking briefly with uh, Kevin Devaney who will um, have a quick introduction here to the workshop and then we'll begin with Mr. Kesh. Okay, Kevin, are you there? Um, can I just uh, do a short summary? Just begin that again. I didn't catch that on the live stream. So oh, sure. Just... Okay. Now we're just saying hello to everybody, to Mr. Cash and everybody else. Uh, let me just uh, summarize from what I remember, what we did last time that first of all Mr. Kesh emphasizes really important in what kind of language what we say how we say to the children so that adults or teachers now and in the future can teach it in the correct way um, before we even speak about physics chemistry and biology meeting the world of matter there is the science of plasma which that which which stands on its own uh, I think that's a pretty good summary for myself. Uh, could you like elaborate on that, Mr. Cash? And thank you very much. It was one of the most excellent uh, workshops last time, uh, from you know comprehending holistically the whole the whole issues around plasma and magnetic gravitational fields. Thank you. Uh, you're quite welcome. I hope we can still make sense by the time we finish. Good evening, good morning to uh, world children, as this is a children's program. We don't know how many children at the moment listen to this, but in the future I think it will be enough of them to listen to what's happening. Uh, what is interesting for the children, uh, what I call young scientists, is to understand the changes which this new technology will bring. One of these changes is in our time and in our, even our fathers, not our grandfather's time. Uh, in our grandfather's time, if you would have told them that, uh, or our great grandfathers, which is less than 50, 100 years ago, you would have told them that you can communicate through uh, telephone or have something called electricity, which is the electric current and you can have everything lit, uh, they would have laughed and they, they would have seen it as a joke. Where the man used to burn fire to have light, and then we had candles, and then we had oils, oil lamps, and then we came to electricity. And this generation onwards will rely on the interaction of the magnetic fields, which means they will not depend on burning something, as has been the habit of the man. In fact, what will be essentially the new generation of uh, youngsters will grow up with in a very rapid way is that, as we spoke about different plasmas, as the plasmas interact, they will see creation of light between the interactions. What this means is that as the magnetic fields of, as we've seen these poles before, this is how we said magnetic fields flow. As the magnetic fields interact, the stronger with the weaker, the interaction between the two will create the light. And the same combination will create the communication, new communication lines. For us, uh, even in my generation, I remember in 70s, about 30 years ago, 40 years ago, we used to have to wait to take time that we are given a time that we could speak with our parents. 
And now, at any point in, on this planet, we can communicate by picking up a mobile phone. But mobile phones and picking up the phones in a very short time will be obsolete. Because it takes time, it takes energy. And for you to be able to receive a telephone call, this means you have to charge a battery. This means when you watch a program across the world, you find out that they have to play a game to delay the picture that it matches the sound. Otherwise, the man's mouth moves and the sound comes a few seconds later. What we have now, when we send commands to the satellites, which are orbiting like Saturn or Moon, there is a seconds delay, a few seconds delay, because we are using a man-made system of communication in a very primitive way in the universal language. Where the universal language, which is your time, what happens is literally what is going to happen is that the communication will be instantaneous. Doesn't matter where about uh, at all. Sorry, Mr. Cash. Speaking of communications, we're having problems here hearing you properly on the uh, call that's coming through kind of rough. Maybe we can clarify the audio a little better there. Yes, because I think we are not with a headphone, that's why. Right. I think we have a problem with a headphone. So we try to, what do you call it? I try to speak in the microphone. Just one second. One second. One second. We'll try to come to another channel, one second. Okay, thank you. So, I try to speak on the... Is it better now? I think so, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, what happened, as I said, in our time of communication, in the present time, what is developing is that as we have entered and we explained the work of the plasma, what we do from now on, we can get on the line of the communication between the two plasmas. What this means, the field from this plasma, for example, in a very simple way, will interact, will Mr. interact. Mr. So can you see this? Can you see this? Can you see this? Okay. Okay, do you see this? Do you see them all? We haven't checked anything from before. It's the same to me. How do we change the bandwidth? How do we change the bandwidth? You're going to go to live stream. What do you mean, live stream producer? Uh, we yeah. have a chance on the option. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Contracts. Does it, is it better now? Yeah. 
We haven't changed anything. It's the same camera, same thing we had up to now. Maybe the problem is... Hmm. Yeah, I can see a pixelish thing here as well. Hmm. Uh, Rick, could you enlarge the, the, the picture somehow on Skype? Uh, is, do you see the two balls on the table? I see it. It's just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we can see that. Blurry. Yeah, it's but it, I can recognize it. You know, it's two balls to you know with uh, uh, field uh, coming up. So. Started to get a little better there briefly. I think it's just the bandwidth thing with Skype, and it'll probably kick in as we work with it, maybe. Going the lap and stuff, yeah. yeah. Because I think that's the. Problem. I can yeah, see okay. the same for for live stream. Now it's changed. Now I can see it clearer. It's clear, Mr. Kirsch. It's clear. Yeah, it's coming and going a bit there. Yeah. I'm thinking you might be right about the live stream on the other channel. It's probably interrupting. Okay, yeah, we, shall we carry we on? Tried, what happened? We tried to give you a full cover on the, uh, in the lab. Mm -hmm. So we used all our, what do you call it, storage capacity. It will be sorted tonight for tomorrow, by tomorrow we will be back online with it. Um, it's just uh, uh, Marco is installing a new system for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So what we, what we talk about is that at the present, to communicate between two entities like the Earth and the Moon, the Earth or the Saturn, we have a time delay because of usage of whatever waves we use. But in fact, with the new era in technology and in this plasma technology, in the time of the youngsters of now, this problem will not exist in two ways. First of all, now that we have on start understanding the plasma, it means you will receive the communication instantaneously. So, we are reaching the zero-time communication. This has been a dream of men of communication for decades. I was explaining to my children recently, in a few hundred years ago, uh, to pass a message, you had to wait for months for a letter to go through. The, the rich people manage, or the governments manage to bring what you call marathon now, for people to run fast enough to take a post from one post to another for the next man to run. And now, we, with the new age of electronics in past 50 years, we have passed the point that we can communicate in a very easy way. Since 1944, sorry, 1844, when uh, Bell made the first call, now we have come to the point we can send messages across the more or less uh, solar system, but it takes time, a lot of time, because we use the property of electrons. We don't use the property of plasma. Now that we understand the plasma technology in a much more uh, comprehensive way in the past few months, so what will happen is that the communication reaching on the gravitational magnetic field of the plasma will be instantaneous, which means whatever this plasma sends out instantaneously is received by the other plasma because their magnetic field is already connected. You are not sending a message to be received. You are literally getting on a bandwagon which is going at a speed beyond a man's imagination in a magnetic field, gravitational field, and you reach to the other plasma. So the communication time from now on is zero anywhere in the universe as long as you can link up with the gravitational magnetic field. What happens is on a magnetic co-field, which is the field which is going out of the plasma, you get on the bandwagon or on the magnetic fields 
of the other plasma gravitational field. So it pulls you in straight away. And when you send a message from the smaller planet, another destination which has a magnetic field with this place, automatically as the field goes on the magnetical, which is the repulsion of this planet, it gets on the gravitational field, magnetic field of this planet. So communication is instantaneous into the man's age of understanding. Even though in the plasmatic magnetic field, it's a slightly time delay, but it's so minute that you can get instantaneous communication anywhere within the universe. So now, as the youngsters, you will see the change. You will feel the change. You will understand totally communication different than our computer wizards and all the technologies which is available today. So, what it is, what does it implement, what does it mean to us? Today, and since yesterday, the knowledge seekers in the Foundation, two of them, have entered this line of work, this line of communication. What it means is that they, being like on this small plasma, by thinking, in being able to get on the magnetic gravitational field of the other plasma, could, through their thoughts, decide how they wanted that this system, this plasma, to behave. To go faster, to lose weight, to go up or to go down. And this has been recorded on a live stream. So, even to us, who we think we are on the edge of technology and science, from past 24 hours, the present communication technology has become obsolete. We have two people who have tested this technology, and in time for you, in the coming months and years, this will change a lot of things for you. As you are now with your age addicted to computer games and to um, what you call uh, different consoles, you will find that the games will change totally. Once the world of science and electronics are present find and become more expert in uh, use of plasma, then you'll find out you don't even need the connections to your systems. So, you find out that you don't need to pay a fortune to buy a game. Because you can literally link up to one game right across the world with millions of people on it playing at no cost. Learning of different languages will become much, much easier if you understand the use of this. Communicating and being able to be part of the new world of plasma communication will change for you. We have shown this, two of our knowledge seekers in the past 24 hours, more than 36 hours, I should say by now, around that time, have been communicating, have been carrying the first experiment of man, communicating through intention, through thoughts, not through electronics or systems. And this all has become possible due to development of the new plasma technologies. People who have children will see the change. In so many ways, in my father's time, thinking of being able to go to the moon was a dream for centuries. Now we send satellites up every day. Every day there is a, there is a satellite flying to Saturn or so something is going somewhere in this galaxy or in this, or we're trying to get to the galaxy in this solar system. So, as I said very recently to a few children, the world for you has become the universe where the world for us 
was the parameters and the restriction of what the Earth gravitational field used to have. So what this means? It means now you can open a plasma and literally uh, uh, Marco is there, it's disconnected oh, there. Um, they got to understand that. Uh, Let's try this. Uh, Okay, we just have a little bit of uh, communication problems there, which seems to be the topic today of the workshop, strangely enough. Yes, it's very, it's very strange, isn't it? No, it doesn't well, it's actually perfect in a way because it's illustrating the just the, the relatively outrageous problems that we have communicating today in our society when we shouldn't really... It should all be easy, but it isn't. It's uh, it's a uh, complicated, uh, specialized <laughs> work. Just trying to get the video and audio broadcast out. I can hear my voice back. Um, no, it's okay. Uh, actually, Rick is better than the pigeon times, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, somewhat yes, better than smoke. Time. Somewhat better than smoke signals, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you're right. We I, need to move into a, a instant communications type systems that are relatively foolproof and, and duplicate things exactly the way that they are supposed to be and so on. Yeah, you see, what is interesting is uh, a lot of youngsters don't even can imagine such a thing is going on. But if you live in countries like uh, Belgium, France and Netherlands, they have still the pigeon race. They fly the pigeons, they take the pigeons hundreds of kilometers away and they have to fly home the way they used to send a message home through the pigeons. So we're still living in the complication of the old time as a leisure, but we still use the telephone and the mobile phones. Um, we used to find these pigeons in the fields around us when we used to live in Belgium because they all have numbers on their foot and then you call the center and say, have you lost a pigeon with this number? And they say yes, so you take it to the center and they, the owners go and pick it up because the bird gets tired of flying so long and it lands somewhere and it doesn't take off again. So uh, this is even done today as a, as a leisure, as a leisure time. So what it is, it's, uh, it's important to understand what we've been teaching in the past few weeks. So what happens now that we have opened the plasma, you can see this plasma, the interaction of the fields of the plasma in getting on the line of the communication shows the plasma is still being there, if you can see it, and its fields interacting and communicating with the other fields of the other plasmas. So, this is a very good uh, explanation and demonstration of it. So, what happens is that the fields from this unit will come to this and then through it to the field directly reaches this. So, the line of communication is the same way as it is set. So, you don't have any, at some point we're getting, keep on getting cut off. Uh, where is the camera? The camera is there. Yeah, but it's connected to this. Okay, so we are back on. So you can see the line of communication is instantaneous. It's immediate. It's without any loss of information, without any interaction. So, in a simple way, in, in the past two days, past day or so, another addition to the world of science has been coming through the understanding of the plasma. You got to realize what has happened is that we run uh, reactors which are here in the center, very much like this, in a very small size. They're very tiny, they're two centimeters. And then we sent two of our knowledge seekers home with two keys of line of connection to be able to, by thinking and their emotion, be able to change the characteristics and the motion 
<clears throat> and the release of the fields from one unit to the other. And we have seen data. We've seen a very impressive data in the past 48, 24 hours. Some of you, some of your parents, most probably have been on the foundation site, on the live stream, and they have seen it. So, what does this mean? This means that from now on, what that this from today, literally from today, because we can pinpoint it to the 28th of August 2000, no, October 2014, the man's position in communication has changed totally. Where you had to speak to communicate, now you can think and your things and your thoughts become command for controlling something else. So, in a very, very short time, the life and the way as human race communicate has changed. In the future, people will understand the significance of today. But as it was in 1844, Tesla, what they call it, Bell, made the first telephone call, hello. In past 24 hours, the two knowledge seekers, Armand and Marco, have made the same step in being able to convert their thoughts in controlling the system from not being near the system, but kilometers away from the system. To be able to do this, it needs more development, more understanding. But by the time you children of 8, 10, 12, 15 years old reach our age in 40s and 50s, you will laugh how these, these people used to use these obsolete systems. But you got to understand, to get to this obsolete system has taken thousands of years and millions of scientists, each one putting a brick into the wall of the knowledge. So, now, in a very simple way, you have leaped into the world of plasma technology, universal plasma technology, and this, what we have started in past 24 hours, 48 hours here in Italy will touch the total fabric of the society beyond imagination. But simply, as you remember, we started with explaining and talking about little plasmas. The eggs, if you remember, how the egg looked. We are setting up new communication lines, new ways of communicating without even talking. Sound, voice, talk is the habit of physicality of the man. And this is what is the ethos of the Keshe Foundation. Thou shall not steal, because from now on, man will start to learn that even your thoughts are understood before you act. So, even if you think you want to rob or to steal, your thought has already been read by the man you're going to steal from. Uh, can so, I ask something, Mr. Cash, in between? Yes. Okay, yes, so that means it. if you're talking about zero-point communication, you're not talking about only about thoughts, but you talk about emotions that come right, would come, as I understood it from the public health workshops, from the emotional part of the brain? Or from this, some it other comes way. from the emotional part of the brain, uh, from but the health I feel side. It, but how can I yes. feel that? You already I'm feel it, but you see, this is the problem. I was explaining to to the knowledge seekers past couple of days. Man has become a chameleon. You have so much become dependent on the front of your head with the eyes and the ears and the nose that you have forgotten the whole control system sits on the back in the center of the back of the head so in reality you have chosen the lazy and lazy way and the easy way for you 
this with this new plasma technology, with this understanding of the plasma, man will start tuning to this understanding. Today, uh, Marco was saying that, or Armin was saying they're aware of what they feel, what is correct, what has to be the behavior of being correct. Because now you stand judging your own thoughts. Because you know that others will understand and see your thoughts before you do. We have machines here which we can do. I originally showed this about a few months ago. And by setting the knowledge seekers in front of the system, I knew what I had in my hand. I could see who's lying, who is not correct, who is to pretend to be giving but actually stealing. And it came for me very clear which knowledge seekers will stay behind. Because you cannot lie to the understanding of the emotions through systems. Uh, can I mention something, Mr. Cash, which you once said, I think it was sort of trying to teach it in a very slow way. You once said that when two people shake hands, <laughs> there's more information probably, Go, I mean, uh, for surely going, you know, uh, on, a, on a plasmatic level, right, from one being to another, just by handshake. That was what I remember, and now this is, goes far beyond that. I mean, this is amazing. Yes, but the thing is, the reason I brought this up with the children is that if the children understand this at a young age, we have achieved the space and the process of what we ask for universal peace. This become part of their life. This become part of their living, the way of living. And, what does it say? Okay, close it down. Is yeah. it open? Is the club open? Yes, yes, the club is open. You can shut it down, yeah. Okay, uh, Rick, it just take a couple of minutes for Marco to, to get to the lab. So, so what, what does this mean? This means why I brought this into the children's teaching side is that we have entered in the past day or so into what we told you about years ago. That man's thought in the space will be read before his action. And that's why there is a need for world peace. And if the children at this young age understand this, <clears throat> as they will be in the space, not in a short time, very, very short time than we be as adults, then, as they learn to conduct their behavior the correct way, then we set up the scene for world peace, universal peace. Because they enter the universal community with understanding that nobody is there to rob from them and they don't need to rob from no one. And this is important for me to, to teach these to children at a young age. And if they see this, to understand how. This one is their brain. And this is the brain of their friend who they're playing with. If they want to cheat, because they're on the same wavelength, the guy will understand this, will not allow it. Would there be a friendship? No, it breaks up. This is what we have to teach. This is what the change. A lot of people look for data and movement and numbers on the on the screens which is coming from the lab. Now Marco has gone to shut it down until we finish and then we put it back on again. The problem is not that we did not know. It is that we allowed it and we ignored it to suit us. In the past 24 hours, we took a lot of numbers down. And this morning, when the both knowledge seekers came back to the center, I asked them, how do you feel? Armand is on the line, Marco is here. They can explain to you. These are people who understand now what it means to be correct. And it's very hard. 
you have to stand the judge of yourself behind yourself. It's two things. You want to have friends and be able to communicate with every creature in the universe, or you want to be a loner. This is the situation man has been for past centuries. This is the position where the man has chosen to be because stealing has become his habit and thinks nobody knows. Be it from a king to a layman on the street. And this is what we're trying. You want to join, now you can read each other's brain. You can understand each other's feeling. And to join the universal community, to be able to operate in the correct way, you have to see how it's come about. Feeling and emotions are built and created through interaction of magnetic fields in the body of the man. And so, they have a strength, they have a line, they do not need language. This is the beauty of the universal language. As I always say, to start this discussion, years ago, how do babies communicate with each other when they have no language? You put a Chinese baby of two months old, one month old, next to an American child of the same age, to Mexican, to African, they understand immediately who's who and who's good and who's bad. There is no language. They understand what man has tried to ignore when he grows up to use the eyes and the mouth to cover itself. So, now we understand the potential and the changes which plasma technology has brought to man and it puts the problem right in front of you. You have to do something about it. It is very easy from now on that you don't need lie detectors. Only thing is, you can speak and in front of the machine, your full characteristics can be de detailed out, it's planned out. And then, if you train yourself, you can see what the emotions and what the thoughts are. And this comes back to one thing. If you put the tree of life right from the beginning, when there is a child, the fruit of the tree will become perfect in adulthood, when the tree is matured. And now we have to teach this to the children. Even from now on, their thoughts has effect, and the effect can be seen and can actually affect themselves. If a child understands that from now on, that if he thinks bad, or if he thinks wrong, or if he thinks he can steal without anybody knowing, as you can detect the emotion and the condition and the people are, can reverse back to the original way they were born, it's very easy. The child is isolated. There is no one who will allow them to enter their line of communication because each field has to be of the same strength. So, isolation of human race has been because of this uh, criterion of stealing and lying and killing. And, that, and now that we open and we show how uh, what I call foolish and childish has been this behavior, man will turn the card, will change to join a bigger community which can benefit by it more. So, in a very simple way, this brings one thing, science and ethics together in understanding how the conduct and ethic will behave the physical existence. When you need it, when you need help, the others feel you and give you what you need, that you are not in pain and you are survived and you can live a safe life. Now, you have to steal and rob trying to stay alive, where in that point, others give you without you wanting that you feel comfortable and you can find your position and your comfort and peace to be equal with them. This is what I explained today to the knowledge seekers. You want to move, move the reactor, lose weight to go up, but you've forgotten to explain your desire, I would like to be there, that the others accommodate you to move to the position you want to be. 
demanding and wanting is different than desiring with the pleasure of others accepting. And this has to be taught in a very simple way. This picture on the table is a change in the human behavior from now on. You were afraid of cameras on the streets that they video you what you do? In the cinemas? In hotel rooms? Now you understand that the camera is yourself to watch yourself. Because now your emotions, your feelings, what goes through your eyes and what you intend to do is becoming open to everybody else. So, this is the behavior of true nakedness and the life in the universe. So, maybe our children learn one thing from the plasma technology we started. Zero communication through interaction of plasma's magnetic fields and correctness in behavior in understanding what has been wrong and what they've done wrong, that it, they do not hide behind things, but they confront themselves with their own problems in allowing others to see what the problem is that can be solved. Zero communication. And in time, in a physical term, you go another part of the world, another part of the universe, another part of this planet or galaxy or uh, what do you call it, solar system, and you can feel you're at home because the images, the feeling given by your parents or the ones you love will be so real because it's on the same field of strength as you that you never feel missing home. This is what is the change, this has been one of the biggest fear of the man. And now, by understanding zero communication and being able to transfer a lot of information through feelings, emotions, even through communication, man will not be alone anywhere in the universe. And this is for our children to learn. To be correct, to be judge of their own conduct, as not out of fear that the other ones see what I do, but out of the pleasure that what I do can help others and others can help me when I need it. Not being afraid and being put on the line of punishment has never worked. But in being able not to be part of is the biggest pain for a lot of souls. So we start teaching the correctness and the, all the social problems in the future will not exist because all the social problems murder, theft, drug addiction, and everything else which comes with it, has come to, out of the physical tangibility and what they want to get, that the others have and they don't have. And now everybody is equal in having whatever they need. I hope uh, today will be remembered as one of the most important part of connections with the youngsters and the future. Any questions? Uh, I've got a question, Mr. Cash. You mentioned before the concept of the free plasma. And in, in respect to what we see on your tabletop there with the interconnecting plasmas, how does the concept of free plasma work in? And you had the, the plasma separated before with mankind um, in its own sort of shell, you might say, its own plasmatic shell, and now we're able to open that plasma more to extend out and feel outside of that realm? Is that kind of what you're indicating there? And how does that work yeah, into this free plasma? Yeah, Is man yeah. working toward becoming a free plasma himself, in a way? Uh, as uh, man as a whole as a community, as a society of man, yes. Because once you are given what has been your desire, your desire doesn't exist, it's like a hunger. You crave for McDonald's, till you get to the McDonald's, and when you have it, it finishes. There is no desire for McDonald's anymore. We desire for uh, 
wearing a sh having a shoe or having a computer game when now you can access all the computer games at no cost and there is no desire to have this to go and rob a, in somebody's pocket or a steal a game from somebody's pocket a free plasma it means it exists because it's in balance with its environment that's what freedom means a free plasma does not mean that you are encapsulated in a reactor or in a body when you have no fear of others taking from you or you giving too much because it's your restriction then you're free uh, okay, can I, um, yeah. Mr. Keshe, can, can I just inject with that question? Would that mean, because remember, I asked you one, I think the first interview I made with you, I asked you whether everything is consciousness. So consciousness, uh, so everything is plasma, I'm sorry. And, and consciousness is plasma too. So is consciousness technology or what kind of additional technology would, would need that exactly for this kind of, I mean, evolutionary, scientifically, technological um, uh, reality then. What do you mean? Explain yourself. Well, you, you're saying that, you know, uh, I mean, we talk about zero point communication. So, is consciousness of peace the key to that? 100%. Where does peace come from? When you oh, do soul. not need peace of mind comes when you don't need, you don't create to have. Where does the peace comes? Where people get what they want and they achieve what they want. Most of the diseases with the youngsters we see at, in the teenager and older now comes from the psychological pressures which they did not have when they were young. The next door neighbor had two games and they had one. And then the pressures which came to the parents that I want a game the same as the guy next door. And then you understand a lot of things in the, in the world today is based on the wants which is created, which the demand cannot or the man cannot supply. Why do the people become thieves? Or why do the children go to the shops and put a game in their pocket? And they walk out and they start a criminal life for themselves. Because the games are put at such a high price that most of the parents cannot afford. But the child still wants to have the same privilege as another child in the school. The parents, the companies, the society, sets children to become thieves by making things impossible, desires that it should be free for everyone. This is what a lot of people would understand what we did when we opened the patterns of the Keshe Foundation. Because now there is no desire for anyone to see what we have. Because now everybody has the same and equal. So, this, this, this is a change of behavior. This brings change of behavior. A lot of parents don't have to work or die for children to have things which other children have. You know, example of it was a couple of years ago. A mother ran to a radio station to be part of a competition that the child could have a, uh, a console. We all know what, count, what, what it was, one of the com latest computer consoles. And the only thing she had to do, she had to drink two liters of water in one go. And that two liters of bottle of water put pressure on the kidneys and kidney failure and she died. This is the extent the parents go to provide for the children if they don't have the means. And when the means is not there, the children find a way. Steal, think wrong, get in touch with other people who are wrong. So, with this way, with this new plasma technology, not only we have shown how knowledge is free, access to knowledge and life has to be free. But at the same time, has to be with everything in life.
there are those who abuse the system, but in the long term, the whole thing will settle correctly. But the whole structure is how you set yourself at a young age not to do what is done up to now. Because you understand, people will start training themselves to feel the others. A mother feels when the child is sick, even the child is halfway around the world. A father feels a son to be in trouble, even if he's in America and the child is in Africa. Because of this magnetic field connection with each other, because of the emotional connection with each other. And now we open the door not to have an emotional contact with one, but be balanced with the whole of humanity and the rest of the universe. This is where the change is. And the youngsters will see it, will feel it, and they will enjoy it. Because to us, even not my generation and the generation after us, our children who are in their 20s and 30s, this cannot be done because it's been too much physicality. But the children in 8, 10 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, that they understand this and they will start seeing the effect of it, they will start living with this ethos. That's why we started the children program. Not for them just to learn how the plasma is, but to learn from now on the different programs you put on, how their life is going to be different. A president cannot stand on a podium and lie to be elected because his thought will be read by the people. A president, a king, should stand and, being in silence, transfer his feeling and his real intentions by thoughts in the standing in front of a crowd. Not through his mouth. And then people know if he's lying or if he's there just to benefit from his, his position. These are all to come. In a very short time, we have built a system here, we can show it and the knowledge seekers, a few have failed in front of it. And those who fail are not here. It was very easy for me, now that you see the plasma, who was here with the wrong intentions. So, we already have done this test, it's not a fairy tale. And today, openly, the whole world have seen in past 24 hours, 36 hours, how the intention of the man will decide how the man will fly, how will increase the weight, how will decrease the weight of a system. Because now, you can show physical intentions in the system, even in lifting somebody, even in touching something, even in trying to move somewhere. The game has changed, as I said from months and months and a few years ago. People will accept this technology not out of the love for it, but out of the fear of it. And now the fear will be, what do they think of me? Can I serve to be better server than the others? So now the intentions will start count. In a short time, Companies will build systems that when you go anywhere, your intentions are known. I've come here to wash the dishes, I've come here to clean the table, I've come here to help anybody who needs a help here, but at the same time, I need to eat, and you get yourself the best food. Then, there is no intention, there is no damage, there is nothing to steal. Some societies have started living this life, but out of being frustrated in what the society has forced them. But, in a way, now we understand what the intentions are, this will start becoming a path on the life. And it's very interesting that the youngsters see this and understand this. It's two choices. Become the human race for past millions of years, because even though the lines are disconnected, as you think, Magnetic fields never lose their connection. Somehow the memories and the connection sits there, there is still a connection. Uh, just one so last question. Is, yes, is go that ahead. Is that going 
Is that what you mean, going to the core of the plasma? Is that it also? So, so there is, so we are more to the boundary, right? To the outer boundary, to the edge of the plasma right now. There is no edge to the plasma. This is, this is you thinking as a physical term. Okay. Because you have a body, you think the boundary of your skin is the limit of your life? Mm -hmm. The plasma of the human race, even the body, reaches beyond the boundaries of this universe. So, it's you who have got the habit of physical tangibility and limitation. Mm. Yeah? It's very much, if you put a hot water in a glass of water, you are used to touching the cup to feel the heat, but reaching the cup from a distance, you can feel that there is the, there's a hot water in the cup. You don't touch it. You don't need to touch it to burn. Exactly. So, the feel is the same thing. Now man has to understand this. That the heat depends how far you go, you still there is a resonance from resin left over from the, 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 the heat of the cup and the water. This is what is going to change. I hope we learn something today with the youngsters and the adults who listen to it. Uh, we should wrap things up here, I guess. We're right. just about at 14 minutes, I promised. Yeah, we're a little over that, but that's okay. Um, that was a great presentation. What a, what a wonderful visual image that last um, thing that you put on, on your desk there is. I, I really enjoyed that, and I'm sure many people did. We Thank got you. to understand we are part of the totality, as we thought we were alone. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, uh, Kevin. And uh, we hopefully will start our session 9 o'clock tomorrow, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, our time for the adults. And we can expand on this that the adults understand too, hopefully. And that'll be at, for this week only, be at midnight um, um, Pacific time rather than 11 p.m., which is usual because of the international time changes. Ah, uh, poor, 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 poor. You have to stay one more hour awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I sleep in the daytime now. I stay awake at night. It's a lot easier that way. <laughs> okay, all the best, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, too, Mr. Cash. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank everybody on live stream and the Skype call, yes. and uh, Kevin Devaney as well for organizing this workshop. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that's the end of the fourth Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop.